Let's dive into the White Hill Mansion of Fieldsboro, New Jersey, the house named for the expanse of its white apple blossoming fields during the 1700s. The 6,000 square foot house is currently in dire need of repair. The property, now owned by the New Jersey town of Fieldsboro, features the original 1700s American farmhouse, its Victorian era additions, as well as a modern dining room addition in the back. The mansion is currently open for ghost tours, which may seem like a bad idea due to the history of the home, which includes a very active prohibition period and bordellos. Journalist Tucker Carlson said the American Revolution is irrelevant to modern America during his interview with historian Martyr Maid, but that is false. Carlson even contradicted himself a few minutes later by discussing the toppling of statues of George Washington, a Revolutionary War figure, by Bolsheviks and BLM over recent years. The American Revolution is absolutely relevant to our everyday lives, perhaps now more than ever. White Hill was built in the 1720s by the Field family, who would lend their name to the New Jersey town of Fieldsboro. White Hill Mansion was built on a bluff overlooking the Delaware River, rich with iron clay deposits, which were used by the Lenni Lenape Indians to make clay bowls and other items for centuries. The ceramic history of New Jersey continues throughout the lifetime of White Hill Mansion. Mary Peel Field was the matriarch of White Hill. She married Robert Field II in 1765 at the age of 24. They had seven children together, but only three survived to adulthood. Widowed in 1775, her home visited by the Continental Navy, searched by the British, occupied by the Hessians, Mary survived as best she could by appearing non-political. She remarried in 1779 to American Commodore Thomas Reed. Mary was born in 1743 or 1741, accounts differ, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, to Oswald and Lydia Peel. She was potentially related to Charles Wilson Peel, the famous Philadelphian portrait painter. Mary married prosperous farmer and merchant Robert Field II at his Burlington County mansion on the Delaware River. White Hill Mansion is on land that Robert's ancestor, John Field, received title to in 1674 from the British Crown. The red brick house has a large basement with access to the Delaware River's edge by a tunnel, a tavern on the first floor at the end of a long driveway, and living quarters on the second floor. Pottery shards and musket balls have been found on the property from this time. A creamery also existed. Robert owned a large plantation, as well as a bakehouse, store, tavern, wharves, and a ferry that went across the Delaware River. He also served as a judge on the Burlington County Court of Common Pleas. When resistance to the acts of Parliament heated up, Robert was appointed to the New Jersey Committee of Correspondence in July 1774. These committees were the brainchild of Sam Adams and instrumental in organizing the First Continental Congress, which convened in Philadelphia in September and October 1774. Loyalists to the Crown were strictly prohibited from membership, enabling an almost separate form of government from the British system. Robert died just six months later on the night of January 29, 1775, when he fell overboard from a canoe going to his shallop on the Delaware River. January is the most dangerous time on the Delaware River as the river moves fast and is bitterly cold that month. A Negro servant was with Robert at the time and threw a paddle to him, but he sank immediately. 
Rumors swirled as to whether Robert was pushed by the servant or shoved overboard by a British loyalist rowing the canoe instead, who had been excluded from the New Jersey committee. We know from newspapers at the time there was only one man in the canoe. Mary Peel Field was five months pregnant with their seventh child at the time of Robert's death. Amy Bruni has done a lot of research on the White Hill Mansion, as well as the Friends of White Hill Mansion organization, and this video relies on their findings. Field's death left Mary to manage her family, tavern, and a large and complicated estate. In 1776, her family consisted of infant Robert and toddler Molly. In addition, Sally Redman, a longtime friend from Philly, and her mother were living at White Hill Mansion as well, as, as including at least a do dozen servants, both black and white. Mary had no choice but to get involved with the American Revolution due to the sheer size and location of her estate, right on the Delaware River. General Washington's defeat in New York and retreat into and across New Jersey in the summer and fall of 1776 made her position more attractive. The American Continental Army crossed into Pennsylvania in early December, and the British Army arrived in Trenton on December 8th. Mary was suffering from a sore throat and fever that day when Captain Tom Houston of the Pennsylvania Navy brought several officers and about 50 sailors ashore, seized flour from Mary's stores, and dined at her tavern before leaving. Actions such as these would lead to the No Quartering Act and Third Amendment of our Constitution. There is a rumor Mary hid American troops in her attic and tavern where they were never discovered by the British, and she said she was sick to prevent visitors from checking in. Four days later, Mary was still sick and confined to her room on the second floor when British light horse cavalrymen entered White Hill Mansion and accused her of harboring American rebels. She denied this, but was ordered to leave her house to talk with the British captain at the estate fence. Perhaps the British noticed her potential relative, Charles Wilson Peel, and his collection of 44 portraits of worthy personages from the American Revolutionary War in Philadelphia. The British captain was very polite to Mary and apologized for making her leave her house and children when ill. He accepted her assurances she had no rebels secreted in her home and let her return. No sooner did she return and feel relieved than another body of horsemen arrived and told her neighbors were watching White Hill carefully and had reported five times in the past hour that Mary had a large number of rebels hiding. Were they jealous of White Hill's provisions and orchards? But the British took Mary's word she was not harboring rebels and left without searching the house. Mary went upstairs to look in on little Molly, who was sick and was feared near death. The local doctor was away, and all the home could do was sit with Molly and hope. Molly would live and go on to become a friend to writer Thomas Paine. In 1788, at the age of 21, she married Richard Stockton, Jr., and moved to Morven in Princeton, New Jersey. They had nine children, and she lived until 1837. Her husband, Richard Stockton, Jr., was the son of Richard Stockton, signer of the Declaration of Independence. Stockton, Jr. followed in the footsteps of his father and his uncle, uh, Elijah Budina, and became a powerful lawyer and a dominant figure in the Federalist Party. 
He was the first United States attorney for the District of New Jersey. And so the White Hill Mansion really elevated Molly and the Field family into the highest circles of Americana. The British troops left the area, but were replaced by their missionaries, the Hessians. Early in the morning of December 14, 1776, Mary was awakened when a Hessian captain and private appeared at White Hill Mansion. This was Captain Carl August von Rieden of the 1st Jaeger Company, and he advised her her tavern was to be used as quarters for either an officer or troops. She took his advice that an officer would be preferable due to their better conduct, and her house became quarters for him and his entourage, consisting of a cook, footman, waiter, butler, and hostler for his eight horses. He provided his own food and was a good guest. He was a pure gentleman, had tea with Mary twice, and Mary made no small business of telling people he was the sweetest little Dutchman you ever see, the, poli the politest, obliging creature in the world. Perhaps this was her way of deterring her spying neighbors, many of whom had their mansions burned by Hessians and Brits. Von Raden's commander, Carl von Dunup, helped Molly the child recover, and ensured White Hill Mansion escaped plundering that other properties in the area experienced at the hands of the soldiers by writing several orders of protection during the war. During the next week in December, White Hill Mansion was frequently visited by Hessian officers, including Colonel von Dunup and several prominent loyalists. At Christmas time, several men had tea at White Hill Mansion, but they left quickly after hearing of the British and Hessian defeat at the Battle of Trenton at the hands of General Washington. On December 28, 1776, American troops marched through White Hill looking for horses and wagons for the army. Every horse and wagon in the area had been taken away except for Mary's. But Continental Army General Hugh Mercer very kindly forbade hers to be taken. He would die the month after providing this kindness. In 1778, British troops occupied the mansion while they searched for Commodore John Barry of the United States Navy, who had been staying there at the time. Mary distracted the British troops with tea things, while Barry ran out the back door, ran down the hill to the Delaware River, and escaped. In this, her loyalty to the United States Navy was established, and would influence her second marriage. Mary married Commodore Thomas Reed in September 1779. Commodore Thomas Reed of the Pennsylvania Navy made White Hill his head county seat. In the following decade, Mary's mother and Commodore Reed died in the mansion, and she signed ownership over to her son, Robert Field III, and his wife, Abigail. After the Revolutionary War, White Hill continued to prosper. Reed had a distinguished career in the United States Navy. Two of her children married into the prominent Stockton family of Princeton, and Annis Boudinot, the wife of Declaration of Independence signer Richard Stockton, spent her final days at White Hill in 1801. Mary died in 1816. Annis Boudinot Stockton was grandmother to Robert Stockton III and mother-in-law to Molly Field. She was married to Constitution signer Richard Stockton. Annis rescued and hid important papers of the American Whig Society prior to the British invasion of Princeton. You can learn more about the Whig Party in the Macbeth Witches video of this channel. Annis also developed a peach cream recipe, potentially at White Hill, due to its orchards and creamery. Annis was a pen pal to George Washington, and she died at White Hill in 1801. Is it Annis that people claim to see? 
Supposedly, the most common haunting at White Hill is the sound of a body being dragged on the upper floors, where the bedrooms were and where potentially Annis died. Another common haunting scene is a woman in white writing at a desk. Annis was a skilled poet, and you can buy her poetry even today. If White Hill Mansion is looking for a way to bring in revenue, perhaps poetry readings and selling Annis's book is a good way to do so. Another common haunting are voices that are heard around the mansion, as if people still live there. And so it's not entirely clear who or what remains at White Hill Mansion to this day. The White Hill Mansion buildings were merged to create a single two-story structure sometime after Mary's death in 1816. The home is brick with white trim and three chimneys rising from the roof. He lost the home in 1804 due to his squandering of the family's money on entertainment and expensive possessions, according to the mansion's history. But in 1806, Abigail's brother, Richard, bought White Hill to help the Field family save face. He allowed Robert and Abigail to stay in the house where they would live until his death in 1850. Robert Field III married into the most prestigious family in New Jersey at the time, the Stockton family, just as his sister did. It is believed Robert III improved and updated the mansion, but fell into deep debt and he did not live very long, dying in his thirties. Pieces of White Hill's land went to a sheriff's sale, and only the intervention of his sister's husband saved him from ruin. He and Abigail Stockton had six children, and stayed at White Hill until his death. His death year is in question. After Robert and Abigail Field died, the home went through many different owners. David Bruce Sr. bought White Hill Mansion in 1821. Bruce Sr. acquired the Ample Estate when he retired from the type founding firm of D&G Bruce NYC. His son, David Bruce Jr., invented a new type of casting machine in the attic of White Hill Mansion and new typefaces, including a, ver a version of today's Times Roman. In 1838, Bruce Jr. invented the pivotal typecaster, or the Bruce typecaster, and subsequently patented it in 1845. This machine replaced men who worked as hand casters. Some saw the machine and plotted its destruction, as it would destroy the livelihood of many local printers, but Bruce was somehow able to foil this plot. His machine quadrupled the output of the typesetter, made the work easier, improved the quality of types, and made the news in England. In the late 1800s, potter and ceramicist Joseph Meyer lived in the home, and he built a kiln in the basement. He invented several new pottery techniques while living at White Hill Mansion. Born near Staffordshire, England around 1800, Joseph Mayer emigrated to the United States in 1865. In 1876, he started the Arsenal Pottery in Trenton, a city that became a pottery epicenter for the United States, relying on the clay deposits along the Delaware River. Mayer's pottery designs are interesting, corn cob shaped mugs, pineapple shaped mugs, and fish shaped di dishes feature. Meyer was known for his creation of several patents for jiggering machines, which used revolving molds to create pottery. His most popular and well-known work was with Rockingham and Majolica. He did not die in the home, but died in 1899. 
In 1895, industrialist Joseph Crossley purchased the mansion. His son, Archibald, born in 1897, was the last baby to be born in the home, and Archibald lived until 1985. Archibald Crossley would go on to be one of the developers of the political opinion poll. In 1879, Joseph Crossley established the Crossley Machine Company in Trenton, which manufactured machinery used to process clay for chinaware, porcelain, bricks, and other products. So we see the importance of ceramics throughout the century. Crossley obtained a wide variety of American and British patents for his mechanical improvements. Crossley's son, Archibald, pioneered the development of political opinion polls with his colleagues George Gallup, whose name remains in the Gallup Poll, and Elmo Roper. The Crossley Center for Public Opinion Research at the University of Denver carries on his legacy. Established in fall 2014 after a million-dollar gift from his daughter, alumna Helen Crossley, the center trains a select number of graduate students in the art and science of public opinion research and how to glean valuable data from poll results. This sounds like it could be a method to introduce bias into polls. It challenges them to think about these countries they might go to and be assigned to in a much more politically sophisticated way, said Floyd Cerulli, a longtime Denver pollster and political analyst who ran the center and taught its courses. This is when the history of White Hill Mansion becomes more fragmented. When the Crossleys moved out in 1911, they sold the house to a woman named Susanna Graham for the sum of one dollar, but there are no historical records of who Graham was. Was this a move by the New Jersey government to prevent the house from going into another sheriff's sale? If so, it didn't work. A Susanna Graham did die in Ontario in 1911. The house was subsequently abandoned and squatters moved in. During this time, the mansion became a bordello, with sliding doors built to conceal secret stairways and the attic sectioned off into several rooms. Today, music can supposedly be heard in these hidden staircases of the house. A railroad track was built right under the bluff, which made tracking who came into and out of the property difficult. There was also the tunnel that led to the Delaware River, originally used for accessing the ice in the winter time to cut and store inside the property. In 1923, Heinrich and Katrina Glenk purchased the property, turning the space into an upscale German restaurant, which became a favorite among politicos. It also contained a very popular prohibition cellar in the basement. Supposedly, the Glenks brewed their own, their own beer, and their cellar was raided once weekly by New Jersey police who took bottles with them to test. As the mansion's history describes it, over the years, the restaurant went by several names, including the mansion, Glank's Mansion House, and the White Hill Mansion Restaurant. In the tradition of Mary Peel Field's neutrality, the Glanks hosted both Republican and Democratic po politicians, the real uniparty. Although it was a favorite hangout of the GOP, the New Jersey Turnpike and Interstate 295 were supposedly negotiated by politicians while at the mansion house as they looked at the long driveway encircling the property. If you're looking for a detailed series about this time in New Jersey history, Boardwalk Empire is a must watch. During Prohibition, the restaurant continued to serve alcohol, with the Glenks adding a bar to the basement of the home by digging out an additional two feet of depth in the cellar floor. Heinrich was allegedly a bootlegger, but one has to remember New Jersey was a huge Prohibition breaker during this time, 
with boats coming onto the Jersey Shore from Canada, regularly carrying Canadian whiskey by night, and faucets built into walls of various hotels along the Jersey Shore and Atlantic City with casks hidden inside the walls. Heinrich Glenk was arrested for this in 1924, but it's unclear whether he ever served jail time. According to the National Register of Historic Places, the charges read seized 1,000 gallons of liquor. Large quantities of beer, wine, and whiskey were found at various places along the Delaware River. Heinrich likely used the 1700s tunnel in the basement of the home to smuggle his contraband in and out. It's unproven but suspected that the restaurant had mob ties during this period. It's also said that local politicians would use upstairs rooms to meet their mistresses. By this point, Mary Peel Field's former bedroom had been converted into a private dining room where guests could ring a buzzer when they wanted service. Heinrich Glank died in 1952, but the restaurant stayed in the family until 1972, when his widow, Katrina, sold it. Eventually, White Hill Mansion found its way into the hands of the Steppen Chemical Company, founded in 1932 in Illinois, which had a plant adjacent to the property. The Steppen Chemical Company bought the mansion and its surrounding seven acres with the aim of turning it into corporate offices, but abandoned the project due to cost. Coca-Cola includes a coca leaf extract as an ingredient prepared by a Steppen Company plant in Maywood, New Jersey. The facility, which has been known as the Maywood Chemical Works, was purchased by Steppen in 1959 and reflects the movement of Steppen away from Fieldsboro as well as the ongoing drug trade in this part of the country. For almost a decade, the White Hill home sat abandoned and neglected until the borough of Fieldsboro bought the mansion in 1999. Preservation efforts began in 2004, and the home is listed as a state-registered historic place in 2012. It's now run by the Friends of White Hill Mansion, which run the aforementioned ghost tours. There is the speakeasy basement and the bordello attic, but there is more than that in this grand old home, especially in its blend of architectural styles and pleasing red and white appearance. The original mid-1700s building was erected in the Georgian style, and that brickwork is still very evident today. But late 1800s additions were made in the Greek Revival and Queen Anne shingle styles, adding dormers to the roof, ironwork, and other Gothic details, as well as a Victorian bay window. The most modern portion of the building is a single-story dining room with a flat roof added around 1960 to the back of the building. Once you enter the building, there is a central hall with an ornate circa 1896 staircase. The first floor features the circa 1760 parlor, two sitting rooms, the 1960s dining room with a wall of windows overlooking the river, and the kitchen rooms. The second floor features multiple bedrooms, the nursery, several bathrooms, and another kitchen. The original primary bedroom was cut up during the restaurant era to additionally accommodate a ladies room and a coat room. In addition to the main access to the attic, a hidden staircase from one of the bathrooms provides access to the bordello rooms upstairs. The attic is divided into a number of rooms including a living room and a bedroom used by members of the Glenk family and two small rooms probably used as bordellos. The basement of the mansion was constructed in several stages in the 1700s and 1800s. It still features the Prohibition-era bar with green carpeting and wood paneling over the original stone walls. Archaeological excavations in 2011 and 2013 
revealed the remains of the original 1722 home and evidence of a now collapsed tunnel leading from the house to the river. It's possible the Glanks collapsed this on purpose. The tunnel would have been used to get supplies from the river and to access the ferry there as the home is on a 40-foot bluff above the Delaware River. Reports of hauntings at White Hill Mansion date to when the building operated as a restaurant. In Passport to the Paranormal, Rich Newman writes that patrons began to hear ghostly footsteps, see objects moving around the room, and hear voices, as well as see shadowy figures around the restaurant. Lights in the mansion are said to turn on and off without cause, and tour guides describe the feeling of being watched. They also report unexplained noises of invisible footsteps on the stairs and of heavy objects being dragged across the floor in the upper rooms. Some believe that the spirit of a woman who was involved in prostitution, possibly against her will, is present in the attic as well. Disembodied voices and sounds have been reported throughout the house, including the claim of one investigator who says he heard the voice of a woman asking him to introduce himself. The apparition of an unknown man has also been reported on one of the house's staircases. The sounds of children playing have been heard in what was once the nursery, and the home hosted dozens of children over the centuries. On one paranormal television show, investigators claim to have seen a quickly moving childlike apparition flying around corners and between doors. This is said by some to be the ghost of Samuel Field, Mary Field's son who died in childhood. Those who lived and worked in the home make frequent appearances in paranormal investigations, many of which are on YouTube, some saying they've heard the voice of Heinrich Glank coming from the attic. Others claim to have made contact with a talkative ghost, perhaps one of the Redmonds, believed to be former servants on the property. Commodore Thomas Reed has supposedly been heard on EVPs. Mary herself, seated at a desk and writing a letter, has been reported in the parlor on the first floor of the mansion, and women and children sometimes report the sensation of having their hands touched or grabbed in that room. Garden State ghost hunters report that the ghost of a woman named Dolly, who was married at the mansion and still wears her wedding dress, is present on the property. Could this be Molly, Mary's daughter, who was ill in 1776? Or Dolly may also be the Glank's daughter, Magdalena Dolla Billingham, who lived and worked at the restaurant for many years and was photographed in the mansion in her wedding dress in 1936. Dolly lived in some of the attic rooms. A tub in the second floor bathroom, which some call the bloody bathroom or the bloody bathtub, is said to be haunted. People who climb into the bathtub blind find it hard to climb out, saying that it feels as if a weight is holding them down. It is alleged that a man either committed suicide or had his throat slit in it, but there's no evidence of a murder or a suicide on the property. With the bordello history, is it possible that this bathtub was used to induce abortions? According to a Princeton Info article written by Suzanne Van Dongen, people who are really sensitive or psychic have come into the room and said the bathtub is full of blood. It's possible the bloody bathroom moniker stems from the red trim on the walls of the room and the story created from there. One also has to remember that these visions started when the restaurant was serving alcohol to patrons. The basement bar is said to be home to poltergeist activity. Poltergeists are a German tradition of a collection of negative energy from human beings which cause items to move. Items will suddenly move on their own, either sliding across the bar or being thrown. Don Reichard of the Friends of the White Hill Mansion claims to have had a plastic vase thrown at her, nearly hitting her in the head. In the basement, one tour guide had the experience of her necklace suddenly snapping, sending beads flying when she was behind the bar. 
The spirit there is said to dislike it when anyone comes behind the bar. Another entity is said to be present in the basement, as Dana Newkirk described it for Weak and Weird, a featureless shadow man, as one paranormal group described it. Supposedly, if you stay near the basement long enough, a dark figure may creep into your personal space before slinking back down to the depths of the basement. So what do you think? Should White Hill Mansion keep hosting ghost tours, which stir up the dead? Or should it branch out into other methods of revenue?